In this video, we'll be looking at the anatomy of the smallest and deepest of the spinal muscles, the intertransversales, the interspinales, and the rotatories. In keeping with the tradition of naming muscles by their shape, function, and location, the intertransversales connect each transverse process together. They run from the superior surface of the TP to the inferior surface of the TP of the vertebra above. Similarly, the interspinales connect adjacent spinous processes. In contrast, the rotatories are named after their function and not their position. This is just as well as they would be confusingly called the intertransverse spinales laterales or some such. The rotatories run from the posterior medial aspect of the transverse process to the lateral aspect of the spinous process of the vertebra immediately above. At this position in the lumbar spine, this means the muscles run more or less horizontally, whereas the other two are arranged vertically. This distinct pattern is repeated on both sides of the spine. It is often said that the intrinsic muscles of the spine act like dynamic ligaments rather than muscles. This can be seen more clearly in terms of their movements. The muscles tend to act to control fine movements of the spine. From an osteopathic perspective, the muscles are a thundering nuisance and seem to be closely related with damage limitation control and are difficult to get at for treatment. The interspinales act to extend the lumbar spine, being situated posterior to the axis of movement of the nucleus pulposus. The intertransversales act to side bend or laterally flex the spine, although, as this animation shows, they also act like shock absorbers and motion dampeners. As their name implies, the rotatories rotate the spine, although their role is only fairly minimal in terms of large scale movements which are controlled by much larger spinal muscles, and we'll be looking at those in the next video.